Hello, everybody. Welcome back to LettermanRow.com and Bermanology. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. I am joined today for the third time on the show. Well, technically fourth time uh, because he was on our, our recruiting roundtable a week ago. Uh, Jack Sawyer from Pickerington High School, Pickerington North. Sorry, Jack. Um, well, welcome back to the show. Uh, how are you? How are things going? Uh, thanks for having me. I'm doing good. Uh, you know, everything's been great. So uh, just taking it one day at a time. Jack, uh, like I said, you were on the show last week when we had, you know, the, the nine other guys on, on with you. Um, that was last Thursday when we spoke. And then the next day, basically, you had to wake up and make a decision um, about your own future. You decided that you were not going to play your senior year at Pick North, um, even though Ohio football has now since said they would continue. How much of the uncertainty around the eventual decision made you kind of feel like you had to choose one, you know, to not play when you did? Uh, yeah, like you said, you know, there was just so much uncertainty, you know, surrounding the whole situation, uh, you know, with high school football and whatnot. And it kind of, you know, put me in a weird spot. Uh, a lot of us in a weird spot. And then, you know, as soon as, you know, the Big Ten came out and canceled their season uh, and, uh, you know, talks, you know, started sprouting about, you know, a spring season where uh, early enrollees can get the chance to play. So it kind of it kind of all factored in together, uh, making that really I mean, it's just one of the toughest decisions I've ever had to make in my life, uh, you know, to, you know, to not play this year and get ready to train and uh, get ready to go in the doors. But, uh, yeah, kind of once, the, you know, that, you know, we had talks that, you know, the the early enrollees are going to be looking like they're going to be able to play and not lose a full year eligibility. You know, uh, it kind of was the, you know, the nail in the coffin for that decision. Was there a sense from, you know, your family, from local coaches and stuff like that, that when the big 10 postponed that um, you guys would almost certainly do the same? I mean, because I, I think that the idea that, High schools in Ohio can play, the Bengals can play, the Browns can play, Cincinnati Bearcats can play, et cetera. Ohio State can't play. Didn't yeah. did you guys not assume that you would not be playing? Oh yeah, no, definitely. You know, we 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 didn't know because everything was just so up in the air. I mean, like you said, it's wild. Every it seems like every 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 level and every team uh in Ohio is playing other than the Buckeyes, which is kinda you know, it's it's very odd. You know, you would you would expect it to be the other way around, if anything. Uh so like you said, it's just you know, when that kinda came out, you know, we kinda almost expected that uh the postponement of, you know, fall sports for high school is definitely coming next, uh for sure. At least, you know, push back to October or something. So uh when that when that all happened, you know, we thought we were definitely next. You know, you lost your junior year of basketball um, with the knee injury. And I, I, we've talked about that before, how difficult it was. You were willing to give up your senior year of basketball to enroll early at Ohio State because you knew that that meant good things for your football future. Now your football season as a senior in high school is wiped out. Like, is there an emotional or mental, like, health toll that this takes on someone? I mean, you're young. I know you're... You're different probably than a lot of kids. You're, you know, a top five ranked player in the country and you have a future in this sport. But what about for kids in your high school and kids you know that aren't going to play beyond high school football like how, how, or behind high school sports? How would you handle this sort of constant? I, don't, I, I mean, the only word is that makes sense is uncertainty, but it just feels like you guys are have been sort of strung along over the last few months. No, definitely. You know, uh, you know, having to sit out, uh, and, you know, just be on the sideline, you know, with that knee injury, you know, watching uh, the basketball team plays here definitely took a part of me, you know, because uh, everyone knew, you know, it was going to be my last season playing. It was kind of like my senior year of basketball almost, you know, because everyone knew I was in, I'm, in early, I'm early enrolling and, uh, you know, not going to play, you know, this year, obviously. Uh, so that was, you know, that was definitely, you know, tough mentally, uh, physically, definitely. And, uh, you know, for the kids that that are that are just playing, you know, for high school for the love of the fo high school football, you know, not really uh, got any looks for you know college or anything, or don't really have a future, in, you know, in the sport. You know, I just feel devastated for them if they don't get to have their season. Uh, so that's why, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping they do get still get to play, uh, even though you know I'm obviously not playing. I still want all my friends and uh, you know everyone to, to get their season. You know, get that last chance. You know, every all they've been working for their whole lives. Uh, you know, to play varsity football their senior year. So uh, I'm just still hoping and praying that they get their season. 
Last time I saw you in person, Jack, was uh, the 11th of July. And at that time, you told me you had gotten you were up to 250 pounds, which for Ohio State fans and uh, you know people who are rooting for your success is a pretty big deal. Pr- probably bad news for you know defense, offensive linemen and quarterbacks. But <laughs> now that you have this extra time, what what do you do to prepare yourself even more for? I'm going to assume at this point your goal is to be at Ohio State in December. As opposed yeah. to even January, right? Right. No, definitely. Like this extra time just just gives me more, you know, more time to work on, you know, all my crafts. You know, definitely get stronger, uh, faster. You know, now I'm even. You know, I went to nutritionist. I'm gonna have a meal plan. So uh, all these all these little steps just to get that much better. You know, all factoring in. So now that I have all this time on my hands, you know, I got four months. You know, get get as prepared as possible to walk through the doors. You know, be ready to play. Uh, so just working on my hands, working on my technique a lot more too nowadays. So, uh, all that stuff is coming together is really what I've been working on and, uh, what I'm going to keep working on going forward. One of the things that we talked about last week or now two weeks ago on, on the, uh, the round table was the idea of bringing it all together when it comes to the class of 21, you guys have had the number one ranked class in the country for the last nine months. You, the number two team in the country is closer to you than ever. Uh, Alabama is only two points behind you in the in the two four seven sports rankings, um, and you know they now actually have nineteen commitments to your eighteen. This pandemic has eliminated the opportunity for guys like Emeka Abuka, JT Tuamalau, and uh, Derek Davis, and uh, Jagger Burton, and Tristan Lee, and all these guys to get back to campus when you really needed them to. Right. I think in jest, we were talking about this idea of like a Buckeye bash slash get together (laughs) at your your house. But, you know, this weekend, Oklahoma is having their Sooner Summit. How serious is the discussion about really getting everyone together in Columbus and and getting to know each other? Because as the number one player in this class, and I'm number one ranked player in the class, but also the first commitment in this class, there's probably what, six dudes you haven't even met yet? Yeah, I think it, I think it's five or six for sure. I haven't met Trey, Evan in person. Uh, you know, Donovan Jackson I haven't met in person. Andre Turrentine I haven't met in person. Uh, Jordan Hancock I haven't met in person. I think I'm missing one more too. So uh, Denzel you know, Burke, I think, right? You've never met Denzel. Yeah, Denzel he's, Burke, he's never been on Burke. campus. So. Yep, I've never met him either. So, I mean, dude, we're, we're, we're very serious about having this Buckeye Bash thing that you kind of coined the name for. Yes. Uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're just trying to figure it out. You know, we're trying to figure out the logistics of it because obviously, you know, some guys are farther away than others. So, uh, but we're definitely going to get it. We're definitely going to have it. Uh, you know, hopefully in the next couple months, uh, we're going to. It's kind of going to be like our official visit weekend. Just uh, everyone staying at my house and stuff. So, got to got to fix the place up a little bit, make some more room. A lot of guys coming. So, hopefully, we get to have this here soon. You know, the, I guess I'm what I'm wondering, Jack, for guys like Emeka, who, you know, you guys talk to, you know, periodically, I, I would say some of you talk to him regularly. Yeah. It, the world is sort of on pause right now. Do you ever feel like you guys are being over the top when it comes to social media campaigns and that kind of stuff? Or, you know, I mean, what is the right tact to take? What's the right road to try to convince these guys that, you know, Mecca is different because he has been on campus twice. Right. J- a guy like JT Tumalau, who is extremely private and talks to no one, who's never been on campus. Yep. Like how, what sort of role can you guys even play in that at this point? No, exactly. Like, I mean, we don't really know how to, how to play it or how to, I guess, kind of maneuver our way in our tactics to try to, you know, get them to, you know, pull the trigger and commit, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's unprecedented times, you know, like you said, uh, you know, obviously, you know, big Ben Christman and Jalen Johnson, and those guys, they, they love to, you know, recruit very hard on Twitter and stuff like that. But, you know, I personally like to, you know, contact them uh, myself, you know, over text or DM and uh, just kind of see how they're doing and stuff like that. So it's kind of been weird. You know, I think if we, if they could have been able to come visit, you know, if this whole pandemic didn't happen that, we definitely have a few, at least two to three more commitments than we have right now from those type of guys. Uh, it's just unfortunate, you know, it's unprecedented time. So, you know, it's honestly up in the air what's going to happen with a couple of those guys. So we just try to keep keep in touch with them and uh, let them know that we still want them to be a part of the Buckeye Brotherhood. Do you sense 
frustration from the coaches at Ohio State? I mean, obviously, you know, when it comes to recruiting other players, they're not they're not really asking you guys for help. Uh, they they have, you know they get paid a lot of money to do their jobs, right? But certainly they understand the value of of having those other players on campus and having you guys work with them individually. But yeah. do you sense that there's a, a increasing level of anger and frustration at the lack of answers that the staff is getting and by proxy you guys are getting? Yeah, you know, I definitely think there's some frustration there. Uh, you know, we, we want answers. We want to know, uh, you know, set stuff on, you know, what we're going to be able to do and uh, if we're going to be able to have people visit and whatnot here, here sometime soon, hopefully, or maybe even later down the road in November or December. You know, I think – I can I can kind of feel you know a frustration kind of around the whole the whole country almost you know with the recruits and you know other coaching staffs I see on Twitter and stuff and uh, it's just kind of frustrating for the whole world right now in the in the world of college sports and recruiting because uh, you know this is a huge time to get recruits on campus you know usually I'd be down at the shoe you know here in a couple weekends uh, every every Saturday you know talking to recruits trying to get them to commit. And, I uh, was really building a relationship with all of them, you know, and then getting to see all my guys too. Like, you know, I haven't seen Ben, I haven't seen Kyle and Reed and those guys for a while. Uh, you know, like we're all kind of frustrated at that too. Uh, but you know, I, I just hope, I just hope something comes out here soon that will allow us to get on campus and visit. For for players like yourself, I mean, the opportunity to to work out, to be on campus is a big part of, of the process. And I guess, you know, if you're looking at college coaches that are wondering how they can move forward, like what are they telling you? Because, again, they have no answers, right? So right. you have Coach Day and Coach Johnson saying, hey, maybe you can play in January and it doesn't count against you uh, as, a, as a full season. Right. Like, as, as a young guy who's not in the program, you have – unbelievably no voice in this entire process. I, I do, yeah. do you sense, I mean, and I'm going to say this to you because you're, you know, CJ Hicks has sort of been named captain Buckeye in the, in the but you know, <laughs> yeah, you, saw that. you are that guy in your class. Yeah, for sure. Without naming names, do you feel like there's any concern about anyone else in your class? I mean, you, you guys did lose a commitment two weeks ago. Do you feel any other concern? No, you know, honestly, you know, with me, I don't, you know, we all kind of don't feel any concern at all. You know, the rest of all the guys in the group chat now and all the guys that we have committed right now, uh, you know, are all solid. They all express that. You know, they all they all let, it, let each other know that. Uh, you know, we talk daily. Uh, you know, it's almost it's almost never ending. You know, we're always, you know, talking to each other on our group chat and whatnot. So, you know, I think we're at a great spot with all the – I think you said we had 18 total commitments right now. 18. At, yes, sir. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, all 18 of us are solid as, as can be. Uh, you know, I'd just love to be able to get all of us on campus sometime here soon. I, the coaches can't ask you for help. Uh, they can't say, hey, Jack, you should have these people come to your house. Uh, like, right. they, they can't do that. So how much of that logistical arrangement is falling on you and your parents? Or, or is it are, – are your parents helping talk to other parents? How, how would that work? Uh, I, we haven't really – I haven't talked to my parents much, you know, my dad, and my mom were like, yeah, you guys, you guys can figure all that out. And, you know, we'll definitely be down to ha uh, have all the guys up and whatnot. So uh, it's kind of, has been mostly recruit to recruit uh, in our group chat, trying to figure it out, trying to figure out when a date we can possibly do it, you know, with some guys still having a season and whatnot. So uh, all that, all those factors playing are kind of making it difficult right now, uh, trying to get all of them up, but we're for sure going to have a group, a group here soon come up and, you know, get a weekend together and get the the official our official visit in and whatnot so uh we're still just trying to figure it out like you said we don't really we don't really have a, a great idea how we're going to get it done but uh we're figuring it out at the moment so well hopefully you're get an opportunity to do it soon before the weather turns because a giant tent in i know the, a giant tent in the backyard at the end of november may not have the same appeal you know yeah I mean? no kidding <laughs> well, look, Jack, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I appreciate you uh, stopping in on the show again and giving us a little more insight into what's going on with you. Uh, hopefully, for Buckeye fans, they get a chance to see you on the field um, very soon. And hopefully, and I, I'm going to keep prodding, but I hope you end up getting your number 40. So you better start. Yes, sir. That's the goal. I you, like that. You better start like working that. on that. So, yeah. uh, everyone, uh, thanks for watching this episode of Bermanology. That's Jack Sawyer. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This has been Letterman Row. We'll catch you next time.